This is Marc Dubois from Harotech. I'm presenting here a video that is a follow-up of my previous video, Considerations Related to Exponential Progression of the COVID-19 Pandemic. In the previous video, I talked about the exponential progression of a virus. Now I'm going to talk about the equations related to the flattening of the propagation curves, and I'm going to draw a relationship with fractals. In the previous video, we saw that if we plot the number of COVID-19 cases for a given region in a log linear plot, the slope of that curve is the log of the rate of the exponential growth. So if we go back to the curves for the different regions and we look at the rates as of March 26th, we can see that those rates vary between 1.11 and 1.46. So if we look at the slopes of the curves as of April 15, we can see that the rates have decreased to values between 1.03 and 1.08, which means that the progression of the virus has slowed down. That means that the use of an exponential equation to track the propagation of a virus is valid only at the beginning of a pandemic. As time progresses, the rates tend to decrease. So we need to modify our equation to take into account the so-called flattening of the curve. So we need to go back to our original equation and remove the logarithm. Now, instead of using the exponential form, we're going to use the iterative form. It means that the number of cases of the current day is equal to the number of cases of the previous day multiplied by the rate of the previous day. Then we're going back to our old definition of the rate, which is a multiplication of the transmission factor, which we're going to assume is a constant, and of the exposure factor, which is going to be the factor that changes as function of day. So we mentioned in the previous video that the exposure factor is the factor that can be influenced by the mitigation method used during a pandemic. So in the present case, we're going to use a rough approximation for the exposure factor. Simply that the exposure factor is the fraction relative to the total number of people that is not infected. So we replace the exposure expression within the original iterative equation, and then we replace the transmission factor by a generic rate factor r. Finally, let's divide both sides of the equation by the total number of person p, and let's use n as a relative number of person rather than an absolute number of person. This equation is known as the logistic map equation, and it can be used as a very simple demographic model. So I'm using the logistic map equation here to model the propagation of the virus. First, I just keep this curve for Italy, and then I change the vertical scale to linear. Then I increase the x-axis length so that we can see the flattening predicted by the model. So here's the fit of the logistic map equation to the data using a rate r of 1.15 and a scaling factor. The goal of this equation here is not to be a precise predictive model, but to help us understand some general behavior. One important characteristic of this equation is that it shows some chaotic and fractal behaviors for some values of r. To illustrate those chaotic and fractal behaviors, I have programmed in LabVIEW the logistic map equation. The VI is going to calculate and plot 300 iterative outputs of the logistic map equation for each of the 2000 R values between 0 and 4. Let's have a look at the results. For all values below 1, the outputs converge to 0. This is to be expected because for R values below 1, each calculated value is smaller than the previous one. For R values between 1 and 3, the iterative outputs converge to a single value, indicating an equilibrium between growth and availability of resources. For R values between 3 and 3.4, the behavior of the output start to look interesting. The output values become unstable and oscillate between two values. But this is for R values between 3.4 and 4 that the results look really interesting. Just above R values of 3.4, the output values start oscillating between four different values and between more and more values as R increases to the point of becoming chaotic. This plot is for a very simple equation that only has a very rough physical meaning, but we can learn general trends from it. First, notice that in the case of our fit of the curve of COVID-19 cases of Italy, we found a R value of 1.15. 
This R value clearly sits in a zone of stability converging to a single value. However, if a virus had a much higher overall rate, complex behaviors of propagation can be expected and therefore possibly making it much more difficult to manage. Before discarding such prediction because of the simplicity of the equation, it is important to mention that the chaotic nature of population curves has been observed for rate R around 3, such as for lemmings. The lemming is a small rodent living in the Arctic. The large fluctuations observed in its population has been the subject of several legends, the most known being of lemmings committing mass suicides. It is now known that those fast fluctuations are associated with a high reproduction rate of lemmings. Such changes from simple to complex and possibly chaotic behaviors is typical of natural systems and can be loosely extrapolated to climate change. As for virus propagation, climate change has an incubation period that makes it difficult to justify a wait-and-see attitude, especially with an incubation period that is on the scale of decades. We just saw the chaotic aspect of the logistic map equation. The fractal aspect can be observed by zooming some regions of the chaotic domain of the curve. One characteristic of fractals is that the same features can be found at different levels of zooming. By zooming several times an area of the curve, we can see each time similar value splitting and pockets of relative stability. Let's go back to the logistic map equation and extract the quadratic term. If we keep only the quadratic term and add a constant c, this new equation also show chaotic and fractal features when plotted as a function of the constant c. This equation was also implemented in the same VI that we used earlier for the logistic map equation. The range of interest for the constant c is minus 2 to 0. In this case, the equation does not have any physical meaning. We can see ranges of stability, instability, and chaos. And fractal behavior is also present when we zoom areas of chaos. If we plot as a color the number of iterations required for this equation to diverge as a function of a complex constant C in 2D, where the x-axis represents the real components of C and the y-axis is complex components, we get the famous fractal image known as the Mandelbrot set. The plot that we obtained earlier corresponds to the values along the x-axis of the Mandelbrot sets, representing the purely real values as shown here. The Mandelbrot set equation was also implemented as a VI. The fractal features of the Mandelbrot set can be explored by zooming in and out of the 2D image. The Julia set features can also be explored with this VI. The Julia set is obtained by plotting the number of iterations as a function of a complex M instead of as a complex C. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question or comment, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section of this video or you can contact me directly. Bye.